This is part three of our forensic toxicology lesson, where we discuss the effects of alcohol and how alcohol is tested for in a toxicological framework. So let's talk a little bit about alcohol and toxicology. Now we're going to talk about this because alcohol is involved in many, many vehicular deaths and testing for alcohol in the bloodstream is of vital importance to the toxicologist. So well, here are some factors that affect alcohol absorption when consumed by a human. Time of consumption. Type of alcoholic beverage consumed. Presence of food in the stomach. By type of beverage, we mean ABV or alcohol by volume. A high alcohol beverage will obviously increase the alcohol absorption um, compared to something with a lower alcohol content. So. In this graphic, this is based on a study done in 1968, but I have to say the data still stands. On the green line, you see um, the results of blood tests of alcohol um, after an individual had a meal of potatoes, but before they started drinking. So these individuals ate, I believe the data was 16 ounces of potatoes, and then were given two ounces of pure grain alcohol, essentially five drinks all at once. And the green line is the absorption of that alcohol in the body. The red line that you see there was the same amount of alcohol but given on an empty stomach. You see the increase in blood alcohol content is much quicker and the decrease takes a much longer time. What are two factors that affect alcohol absorption in the body? Excellent. If you said time or rate of consumption, type of beverage, or presence of food in the stomach, you would be correct. So let's talk a little bit about alcohol intoxication because that's a little bit different from absorption. So alcohol intoxication depends on the amount of alcohol consumed, the rate of consumption, the body weight of the individual consuming the alcohol, someone who only weighs 100 pounds, they'll become much more intoxicated by the same amount of alcohol compared to somebody who weighs 200 pounds. The rate of the alcohol absorption, meaning was there food in the stomach or was there not? What type of alcohol was consumed? What happens to alcohol once it's in the body? Well, alcohol is primarily absorbed into the bloodstream and then it's distributed throughout the entire body through the bloodstream into the body's water. This is one of the reasons why alcohol affects the nervous system so strongly because your brain is actually 80% water. It has a higher water content than any other body tissue. So alcohol tends to preferentially affect your brain and your neurological systems. Finally, alcohol is eliminated through both oxidation in the liver using alcohol dehydrogenase and excretion in the sweat and the breath. So alcohol is initially absorbed through your stomach and intestines when consumed. Once it's absorbed into the bloodstream through the stomach and intestines, it's oxidized in the liver by an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase. The alcohol dehydrogenase is actually seeking to turn the alcohol into a less toxic form. And the thing it turns it into is acetic acid or vinegar because that is less toxic to the body than the alcohol. Now, specific alcohol we're talking about here is ethanol. I'm going to have you watch a little video clip about what happens when people used to consume methanol during prohibition because the effects were very different and much more deadly. Now, the products of this oxidation are excreted by the body, by the breath, by perspiration and kidneys. And essentially it's turned into carbon dioxide and water over time because that acetic acid is broken down and turned into sugars in your body. So let's talk lastly a little bit about New York State DWI laws since we are here in New York State. So New York State uses BAC or blood alcohol concentration to determine intoxication levels. If someone is pulled over and given a breathalyzer test, these are the numbers that someone is blowing in their B in their um, these are the numbers that someone 
would be registering when they take a breathalyzer. So law enforcement will charge with a DWI if the BAC is along the following lines. If someone is 21 years old or older, they would be charged with a DWI if their blood alcohol content is 0.08%. If they are driving a commercial motor vehicle, meaning for a business or a company, a blood alcohol content of 0.04% would be enough to be charged with a DWI. And if someone is younger than 21 years old, a BAC of 0.02% is sufficient to be charged with driving while intoxicated. So question check. At what minimum BAC would a high school student be charged with DWI? If you chose 0.02%, you would be absolutely correct. So that's it for our unit on toxicology. We're going to be having you look at a few special cases here and there. We've already had you look at a case that dealt with arsenic. You've been doing some research about a famous poisoning case and some common poisons that are used. We're going to actually have you also look at methanol poisoning and a couple of other historical famous poisoning cases. Thanks.